Hi, and welcome to another episode of Hot Takes with me, the Silver Fox. It's going to be a very difficult few days for Rishi Sunak. Uh, he's already likely to lose all three elections that are coming up uh, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow afternoon, uh, or tomorrow morning indeed when the polls open, uh, but the announcement uh, will start being made tomorrow evening after they close. Uh, so chances are he could lose all three seats there. That will put pressure on him. A poll has just showed that he is at his lowest ever ebb in terms of um, popularity or approval. Uh, he's making things worse for everyone in the country by insisting that high interest rates are important to beat inflation when inflation is led primarily by food costs. And it doesn't matter how high you put the interest rates, people still need to eat and that won't bring the price down anytime soon. All he's effectively doing is the continual sort of global conspiracy thing of taking money off the normal people and handing it to the banks who will then benefit when they can go in and foreclose on mortgages because people can't afford to pay them. Uh, then the banks own the houses and then they can rent them out uh, like they couldn't do before, but only under this Tory government has that been allowed. So, uh, yeah, it's not surprising that the Tories turned into a party of complete bastards. Uh, they are deliberately following their orders from the WEF to turn us all into vassals and serfs. Uh, and that's the only reason, of course, that the interest rates are so high. Because anyone uh, with any kind of political nous would know you cannot beat inflation that's food-led because it doesn't matter, because people need and have to eat. Rather, wouldn't it be better if people had enough money so they could afford to buy the food? Or has he not thought of that? Well, it's not likely then that he's going to win these three elections because of it. And ongoing problems are rife within the party. There's infighting, there's backbiting. The party is starting to split asunder. And it is a good thing to see. This is a party that's been in power for far too long. They've run out of ideas. They are, to England, what the SNP are to Scotland. They're now destructive. So it's time for a change. The only trouble is Labour aren't any better. Uh, and in fact, they're likely to make things worse. Uh, who do you vote for? This is the problem. Uh, they're all clowns. They just belong to different circuses. So anyway, we'll take a look at this to see Rishi Sunak, see how unpopular he is and see why it's good that he feels, you know, uncomfortable in his position. Um, I think there may well be a coup d'etat sometime very soon. Here goes. So Rishi Sunak's approval rating at an all time low, ahead of difficult day for the Tories. Uh, a difficult few days, let's be honest. Um, you know, because they, they're just gonna, it's just gonna be calamity after calamity after calamity for the next few days. Uh, two thirds of the people polled had an unfavorable, unfavorable opinion of the prime minister. I'm surprised it's only two thirds. And I'd be surprised if it was, wasn't two thirds within his own party. Uh, new polling suggests Rishi Sunak's approval rating is at an all-time low, despite defeating the House of Lords over his small boats migrant bill. Yes, but nothing's actually happened yet, and until that happens, nothing is going to change, is it? Uh, it comes ahead of what he admits will be a difficult day for the Tories. Well, today, of course, is Prime Minister's questions, and it's very unusual. Uh, it's not unusual that they have them. They have them every Wednesday. What is unusual is that he's actually going to be there, because when it comes to it, uh, he doesn't like turning up for Prime Minister's questions because the questions are hard and he just doesn't have the answers. He's not very comfortable taking uh, questions from people who um, who want to attack him. He's like that. He just wants all that smiliness of like, I'm in charge, I'm in charge. Nah, nah, nah. He doesn't like being pressed on um, points that people make because he's he knows that the answers are difficult, put it that way. Um, he, he is set to face Prime Minister questions uh, today with his backbenchers. Uh, and then tomorrow he faces the midterm by-elections he has admitted will be difficult. Uh, we, they're not midterm by-elections. Let's stop calling them that. We're not American. We don't have midterms. They're just by-elections caused by people resigning or in one case being forced out. Uh, and there's three, there's three constituencies going, but they, it's very unusual um, because of the constituencies. But we'll, we'll get to them when we get to them. But it is, uh, it's just like, ooh, just a coincidence. Nothing, nothing weird. But well, yeah, it is weird. Uh, but it's just a coincidental thing. We'll, we'll see that in a minute. Um, the polling showed that just a quarter of Britain survey, surveyed by YouGov last week hold a favourable view of the prime minister, and two thirds have an unfavourable opinion. 
I can't think of anyone who's got anything good to say about him. He is a non-taxpaying billionaire with a green card so he can skip town as soon as he's finished screwing us over. Uh, he's got his wife, who's a, you know this billionaire wife who is um, non-dom for tax reasons, so they don't pay tax. And yet he sits there and he puts the prices up for us and he puts the interest rates up for us, making us poorer while he doesn't pay anything in tax. Kind of sucks, doesn't it? Kind of sucks. Hypocritical, two-faced tosser. Uh, he needs to be massively taxed to the point of hundreds of millions of pounds. That's how much they have avoided in tax. Um, and that, you know, and that, if he if he was paying his tax, you could probably give him a, a half a break. But while he's while he's a non-tax taxpaying billionaire, he can fro, can't he? Uh, his innate favorability has tumbled to minus forty, the lowest level since he took office. I think um, I think I can't think of anyone who's ever been lower. Honestly, I can't think of a Tory leader who's ever been lower than that. Uh, the polling firm said uh, it's bad news for Mr Sunak ahead of Thursday's by-elections, with the Tories already bracing for a potential triple defeat. I will be surprised if they win any of them. The only one they've even got a snifter of a chance at is Uxbridge, and that's only because people hate Sadiq Khan. Uh, but uh, even that said, the Labour um, candidate in Uxbridge is also against Sadiq Khan's um, plans for uh, road pricing. So, anyway, um, his approval score has dropped from minus 34 in late June. Since then, the economic situation has continued to be dire, with the cost of a mortgage hitting a 15-year high as a deliberate policy to drive people out of their homes so the homes can go into the hands of the banks. That's the only conclusion you can get. When you understand, as I say, that the interest, uh, the inflation is driven by food um, and people need to eat. Despite Mr Sunak's pledge to halve inflation by the end of the year, it has stuck at 8.7% and the Bank of England is still hiking interest rates. The latest official inflation figures are released on Wednesday morning amid worries over more financial pain in store for homeowners. They'll come out uh, in about an hour's time. While the consensus amongst econ economists uh, that June's figures will stay high at around 8.2%, the issue will likely come up if Mr Sunak's weekly clash with Sir Keir Starmer. Uh, public perception of the Labour leader is far better than that of Mr Sunak. Uh, but his perception is still at minus 22. So he's still minus 22. The, the most popular leader in the country, minus 22. Tells you all you need to know about political parties. Now, I know there'll be people out there and they support the Tories and they support Labour and they support the Lib Dems or, God help them, the Greens. They will support these parties. But what you've got to remember is we're people. Parties look at us and they don't care. They do not care about people. All they care about is themselves, pushing their own agendas, putting themselves into position of authority and power. They're all psychopaths and liars. They do nothing for the good of the people. And anyone who sits there and goes, oh, I'm a fervent Labour supporter. Labour damage you. Labour damage you every time. Look at Labour policy. It damages you. Look at what Tony Blair did to the working man. The working man in this country used to be able to buy a house, go on a foreign holiday, run a car, maybe a second car with his wife and things. Now, the working man in this country is a wage slave working in a... Um, in a you know, min, you know, minimum wage in a warehouse or something. Um, foreigners coming in, open door migration policy, bringing loads of people in. We need inflate, uh, we need immigration, sure, but we need to have controlled immigration. We need to only bring in the best. But he's done that, and he's done that for two reasons. One, he wanted to bring down self, um, being self-sustainable. Because when people rely on the government for help, the government can control them. And when people are earning enough that they can buy their own home, run a car and go on holiday, they don't need the government. Tony Blair knew that. So he opened that door to bring in all these foreign um, workers, driving down the prices, driving down the wages. And that way people were absolutely reliant upon tax handouts, you know, uh, benefits left, right and centre. Done it deliberately, got control of the people. Also, he figured that all the immigrants coming in would vote Labour. So he is deliberately damaged. So that's what the Labour... So all you Labour Party supporters who are still working, look at what Labour's done for you. And all you Tory people, all you sitting out there going, oh, yes, well, we've got to vote Tories. They're, they're handling... They're, they're, we don't trust Labour with the economy. How's the economy going here, mate? How's the economy going? You've now got 
if, you know, your, your, your mortgage rates are through the roof. People are going to be losing their homes. You can't afford to buy food. Anything you, and you, you know, the one thing you absolutely need, you, you can't afford to buy. Uh, it isn't about going on jollies anymore. It's about putting food on the table for your children. You can't do that. Uh, and, and they've done nothing. All these parties out there, and they are deliberately damaging people. And they're all doing it because they're all part of this globalist World Economic Forum thing to turn us all into little drones and serfs and the 15-minute ghettos. They keep trying to push these 15-minute ghettos that we will own nothing and we will be happy as we're eating our bugs. Meanwhile, those elite wankers are sitting up there on the finest steaks and the nicest wines and travelling the world in their private jets and they claim there's a global um, climate crisis. Give them up the jets. Let's ban all private jets and let's see then if there's a climate crisis. Anyway, getting off tack, off tack there. Let me come back. Mr Sunnock's last grilling in the Commons before Parliament rises for summer uh, comes after he missed the last two sessions for the NHS 75th anniversary special and to attend the NATO summit in Lithuania. He's also missed... He, he did go to the one before that, then he missed one before that. He had, like, then he missed three before that. He had one, then he had missed three before that. He's got the worst attendance at Prime Minister's questions of any Prime Minister in history. And one of them was ill. Um... The Conservative leader is expected to address his MPs at the 1922 Committee of Backbench Tories later on Wednesday. There is much grumbling, let's put it that way, oh, especially on the backbenchers. The backbenchers see him as a liability now, uh, and I know that there is grumbling within the party, uh, and it may well be a coup d'etat on the way. Um, wouldn't surprise me. You might get a stalking horse candidate up and then just push for it, and then the stalking horse will sort of lead another person to go in, and then you get maybe two or three to throw themselves in the ring, and Sunak will be out. Uh, on Thursday, he faces, and I don't like midterm, that we're not American, he faces terms uh, by elections, he's admitted will be difficult. Now, this is why I was going to say the three places in the by election, which is just odd, because it, it's just odd that it happens. Um, it's Uxbridge and South Thrislip, Selby and Anstey, Somerton and Frome, or Froome, sorry, it's Froome. People from Froome, I know. But it's odd that you get three of them and they're all A and B. It doesn't happen very often that you get something like that. Anyway, so they've got these three. And like I say, um, Selby and Somerton and Froome are, um, are most likely to go straight away. They're, they're unlikely to be held. Um, Uxbridge and South Ryslip, possibly, possibly held by the Tories. It's going to be tight, whatever happens. But if it goes Labour, that'll be all, you know, he'll have lost all three. And if he loses all three, the pressure will be on him then to start uh, doing something. And I think that's when the murmuring, the whispering, I think the whisperings will turn into murmurings and it won't be long before it becomes a tap on the shoulder and a request to, you know, fuck off. Well, I shall stop there. I shall come up and we shall finish this video. Remember, it doesn't matter who you vote for. You're all going to get the same party, the WEF. That's who comes in. We need a change of regime in this country. Perhaps one election only. We only vote for independence. No parties. Screw the Conservatives. Screw the Labour. Screw the Lib Dems. Screw the Greens. Doesn't matter. Out. Boom. Gone. Only vote for independence and have 650 independents sitting in Parliament. Wow. It'd be a free-for-all, wouldn't it? They'd be sitting there. They wouldn't know what to do. They'd be slitting each other throats looking for the big seat pay good money to watch that because they it would it would be every man for himself because you might as well if you're going to have a party destroying the country let's not have a party destroy a country let's see real people go up there and deal with the problems real people who've lived these experiences real people who've been plumbers and managers and company owners not people who've left university with a ppe gone straight into policy uh, politics become a runner for some mp crawled and lick arsed his old way up the greasy pole till he gets a, 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 um, a nice easy constituency to stand in, wins a seat, set up for life, big pension, big salary. Oh, look at me, look at me, I've had a hard life. I know more than you. Do you friggin' hell, you've done nothing with your lives. And that's the trouble with all these professional politicians. We need people who've actually held a job. Make a change, wouldn't it? Anyway, I shall stop there. Thank you very much for watching. If you like what you've seen here on the channel, please hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, leave a like, leave a comment, please share the video. And until next time, stay safe, stay well, and remember they are all out to get you. It isn't paranoia. They're all lying, two-faced weasels. Bye.